Good afternoon again. This is Dr. Bill White, and I'm going to be talking about expansion of arches. And uh, the subject was older people, but this lady is not all that old. She's only 30 something here, and I wanted to show it to you. It looks like somebody had extracted all of her bicuspids. But she's never had a tooth extracted or needs no bicuspids at all. I don't remember all the wisdom teeth or anything like that. But it's a interesting case of how we expanded this. And she had temporal mandibular joint problems. And we used a reverse headgear to bring her upper teeth forward. Or we tried this fancy one that doesn't push back on the jaw but didn't have too much success with it but anyway it's a rather interesting case and she uh, was a very efficient assistant in the dental office and we uh, had a good relationship with her and she uh, was a very good assistant too so anyway, we'll start out, and uh, she's in her th early 30s, and this is after we straightened her teeth and everything. So this is uh, 8 of 04, and, uh, but she has the appearance that uh, she's had teeth extracted, but she has not. And you can see that later on in the case. And I'm going to try to go through this pretty quick. And this is after we expanded and did all the good things to the teeth. Uh, but I'm going to go back and show you later on. Uh, her teeth look almost perfect here. And that's her three to three we bonded in there. And she uh, had a beautiful set of teeth and this goes back to uh, 4 of 90 and uh, here are her teeth she had this terrible deep bite in which uh, she had one lower anterior tooth that was crowded out right here completely out of the arch and it's closed up like that and I'm going to just uh, more or less discuss and be interested in the expansion of the arches, which we're talking about in these five cases that we'll eventually get up here. We've got separators back here in the back. You can see them over here and uh, uh, trying to get this arch, uh, uh, the bands on the molar teeth back in that area. And... And looking at it from the top, you can uh, get a good idea of the separators and what we're doing there with them. And the upper teeth are kind of crowded and tucked in around the front of the mouth. And the lower teeth have a lot of crowding. And this tooth is crowded out right here. And you can see how it's worn the top off of that uh, tooth at this early age. Now, I don't see any wisdom teeth, so she's uh, probably uh, has had them out. Uh, apparently, I'll have to look at the x-rays here in a minute. Now, these expansions, we just did without palatal separators. We did these expansions with just, just arch wires, and usually we'd use these heavy arch wires. Sometimes you can do it, though, with just rectangular arch wires going in there torquing and the teeth will just expand like that with just a rect regular rectangular arch like uh, is in here. Uh, that's one way. Now there's an intruding wire here. Of course, her lower anteriors were up here in the roof of her mouth and so we're going to push them down with this intruding wire and you saw how her teeth had finished up there. We are running into this uh, video backwards. So uh, this is 12 of 90. We're in 
process of uh, expanding and enlarging this. And I'm going to go through pretty quick because I just wanted to stress the point that we could expand during anybody's arch with this arch wires. Now we put the big arch wire on there where you really need to go in there. But if you just got the teeth tucked in like this, you put torque in a rectangular wire, and it'll, it'll expand the arch, you see. Uh, so anyway, we go, th go through this pretty quick. Uh, now we're coming along pretty good. You see this, uh, this is a rectangular wire and it'll torque those teeth. As it torques them, it pushes them out or expands them and it'll tend to get the roots in a little bit, but these cases are tilted in this way and so you tilt them out and leave, more or less leaves the roots pretty much like they were. They may come in slightly, but you see how these teeth look in here and you can accomplish that frequently with just a rectangular arch wire. Now you like to kind of have the arch wire expanded out past so that it's pushing out but it doesn't push out enough to counteract the uh, buckle root torque you see that you put, put on them if you use those big wires you need that buckle root torque especially uh, if you're expanding and the teeth are tucked in it's kind of like that but if the teeth are this way and you expand boy you've got to have a a lot of this buckle root torque on the case to get it so uh, anyway we'll go through this pretty fast here and we have to close some spaces up in here now this is a reverse headgear that rests on the cheekbones up here actually if you're going to make this thing you you try to put this pad over on the cheekbone but the pressure pushing back here and then it goes to the back of the head and pulls forward on that and you've got a strap up here on the head and it doesn't push backward on the lower jaw see to get the maxilla forward now that runs into a problem people's cheekbones get sore right quick and so this isn't a real winner uh, it's better to go up in the roof of the palate now go up in the palate and put some screws in there and then push forward from those screws you can shove the anterior teeth forward to help a TMJ problem. In other words, your jaw wouldn't hurt, it would, but back here it hurts and you need to put your lower jaw forward to have it where it doesn't bother you. And then you've got to bring the maxillary teeth to where they enter dish in the right position when you've got your jaw forward. So that's the whole thing in a secret there is jaw position. Okay, now you see that went around behind the back of the head, you see, in here. So as you pull forward in this, it pushes back on this. It kind of pivots off the cheekbone, and then this holds it around the head. Uh, but that's not too successful a reverse headgear, but it is a, it is a reverse headgear that does not put force on the mandible pushing it back that's the only virtue of it and this uh, discomfort of the cheekbones is uh, a drawback on this type of headgear it might be if you had a face mask or something up there that it would put pressure over a lot of the uh, facial structure but uh, you bring this thing forward, you'd move this pad forward and get it around on this side, and it still gave trouble. So uh, I'm not pushing that type of headgear. It's uh, it's it was pretty 
painful for the people in uh, these uh, people working in the office war, and they didn't mind telling me, you know, about it. But that's uh, the idea behind it, uh, and it did some good. But when we level the bite out, we leveled it out here. Uh, it the jaw came forward, some on its own, and the interdigitation worked its way out better. And the TMJ problem left uh, because it didn't really need much movement in there. And this is a retainer bite plate we use in doing this. Uh, this is the lower arch. So I'm going to run through pretty quick here. You see we dropped the brackets low down and then we came up here and, and came back with them. And you see that way. Uh, these are this little small brackets. We learned how to rotate teeth with them and the ladies that worked in the office uh, like those little brackets. And you can keep your teeth cleaner with them too. So here we're getting pretty good. That's 1992. That's 90. The, I think that's the first uh, cephalometric uh, picture we've gotten on her. And uh, here is the second one. It showed it really looks like she had teeth extracted, but she did not. And this is January of 93, and this is the first uh, panorex, and we had her bite together, of course, and the upper teeth came down to here. The lower teeth went up to there, so you can see how much bite closure you have. So we're going to have to bring most of the uh, correction will be in the lower arch. I'll show you that and then some of it will be in the upper arch. And we're going to expand the arches with just arch wires. So here we are. We have an intruding wire in there. You can see the spring over here bringing it up, and it's bringing the lower anteriors down and probably just turn the arch wire on the upper up. Now she's 31 years and 7 months at this point in 90, uh, 91. So this is not a older patient, but uh, it was a neat expansion with arch wires and worked out so good. Now we took these transcranial x-rays. We got some good x-rays on. You can see the head of the condyle in here. And then this is relaxed. That's the head of the condyle. It doesn't seem to want to mark there. And then when they open the mouth, then the condyle is out here. See, and this is the fossa, the fossa, and the fossa there. Uh, this was biting, and that's relaxed, and that's open. And the same thing going back on this other side. Over here, we do... Uh, took those transcranials back then on every TMJ case that we had uh, to get an idea. Well, when you look at the, take the models and take a picture in the back, you can see these uh, lower anterior way up here. So we had a long way to bring them down, and they were jiggled up and messed up in there. And one of them was wore down. I don't know how it didn't look that bad, you see. And so you were going to expand this deep bite case. And then we had to bring the lower jaw forward. After we got these teeth straightened out, you could move your lower jaw forward. And that helped the lower jaw, the condyles rubbing against the retrodiscal tissue or where your synovial fluid is formed was one of the reasons for giving her trouble with the TMJ and when we got that cleared up she didn't have any further uh, joint problem. Now here we are after we have finished this, this is 93 and you can see how these lower anteriors are lined up so much better and the upper lined up we've got a 
retainer in there with nothing going over the occlusion and we bonded a, a three to three on the bottom and there we is that's from the right side of the mouth here's the left side you see where this tooth here will come back to there by bringing this out and there it is after we expanded and finished it out in that position and this looked like that in 90 and that's 90 looking at the model again and here it is in 93 we've straightened it all out and changed the torque that's a retainer in there now you see how that lower was deep i mean we had to take all these teeth down and then the jaw came forward and she's got room for all of those teeth in there whereas you'd think you'd have to take one of them out but you do not if you open the bite like this like this and there's more room down there than you think on a lot of these cases uh, so open the bite and level things out before you even consider uh, making room for them or taking teeth out now there they are like that and there they are in there and there's plenty of room for them and uh, it looks like somebody extracted all of her bicuspids but they didn't i think that may be the last picture i've got on her so i encourage you to adventure out if you're not expanding these adults go ahead and do it but level the bites you know before you make any decision about extracting teeth on them and uh, it's worked so much better uh, you see how that looked and that's the way the dentition looked after we straightened it all out and there we are so hopefully you'll uh, pick up something from this video thank you for watching and if you can join our group and uh, subscribe to our channel uh, thank you for uh, watching i'm going to close this out now and uh, try to get on with this thank you